Okay. Oh, we're live. Okay, I'm on home internet today, so hopefully this doesn't go too badly. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Dan. This is JavaScript enabled for October 1st. Um, so, uh, yeah, usually just start with introductions. I know most people here are familiar faces to me, but we'll just, we'll just make sure. Uh, my name's Dan. I live in Oakland, California, uh, just like Nan does. And um, I am, at the moment, a teaching assistant at a web development school and a JavaScript enthusiast and Angular learner. Um, so, and, and your host here tonight. So, uh, Farish, why don't you start uh, just a quick introduction. Can you hear me? Am I delayed? I'm waiting for my dogs to stop barking. Oh, okay. Uh, there we go. It was perfect timing. It always happens. <laughs> Hi, my name is Farish Kashpinijad. I am a advisor at Code Academy. Uh, I happen to be developing for about a little over a year now. My specialty is Rails, but I've been working and learning on more JavaScript. Cool. Uh, welcome back. Um, Mark. Hey, I'm Mark. Uh, I'm from San Diego, currently in the military. Uh, slowing to kind of transition out. I have about two years left in the contract. Uh, that will have me at like 12, 12 years, I believe. And my interest is in JavaScript and anything that deals with JavaScript. So I've been coding probably for, well, learning the code for about six months through various sites like Code Academy, Free Code Camp, Project Odin, uh, Team Treehouse. So, yeah. Awesome. Cool. Uh, good to see you again. Uh, Nan, what's up? Uh, I'm Nan. I'm uh, also I live in Oakland, just like Dan. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, I'm um, a student of JavaScript. I have been learning Angular for the last few months, and that course finished, but I'm not quite done with my app. Um, anyway, so I'm just uh, just you know constantly learning, trying to learn more JavaScript and watch and soak up more stuff. Cool. Good to see you again. Um, Tommy. Yeah, my name is Tommy Noe. I am from Indianapolis, Indiana. I uh, currently work as a Salesforce consultant. Um, but I'm trying to move a little bit more out of the consulting space, more towards development space. And I've been... Uh, I've always flirted with, with JavaScript, but now I'm starting to, to dig deeper into it over the past few months and looking to learn as much as I can about JavaScript and all the libraries and frameworks that surround it. Cool. All right. So React. Oh, I should mention I have to, I have to go right at 7 tonight, um, so we probably can't go too late. But um, cool. Does anyone here not have access to the Trello board? I'm just going to post a link in the uh, chat window, and if anyone follows it, and, oh wait, where'd y'all go? There you are. Uh, doesn't have access, let me know. Um, I can also screen share it. So this is this is our, the current state of our Trello board. Um, I did just, just add some resources to the README. That was like way overdue, um, so we can probably do that pull request. Um, I just put in the, uh, 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 several links that um, Tommy and Catherine had shared in previous weeks, and then also the uh, the fake the the Facebook's own um, React introduction on um, yes, Farish, I will Farish, I will add you just as soon as I'm not screen sharing anymore. I want to make sure I don't put people's email addresses like right out in front. Um, so th uh, this is yeah, this is a state of things. So Tommy, you've got a, you've got a couple projects in progress now. Do you want to um, have well? First of all, have you made any changes to the that meetup wrapper that you were um, that you originally taken on? I think there was there was one slight change. I noticed I needed to add um, like an index variable to one of the maps. I mean, it wasn't big. It was just mm -hmm. something I saw that was missing. I think that for now, that could probably. I, I think it's it's stable as it is. I'd like to go back and, and take a look at it and touch it up a little bit more maybe once we get going, but um, I think for now it's it's pretty stable. Um, but yeah, I would like to, to maybe run by the uh, other pull request I had for just the, the initial sort of framework of the app 
Sure. Or just the beginning portion. Yeah, of maybe it. it's best if we do that one first, and then we can merge that, and then um, merge your API wrapper, and uh, hopefully there, hopefully you don't have conflicts there. And um, then that, um, and, and then if we want to make changes, you know, we can open, we can open, you can open other pull request up, but it'd be good to just have all that stuff in, in one place on master. Yeah. So definitely. why don't you show us the uh, the file layout you set up? Yeah, give me one second here, trying to get it all set up here. Let me move this. Okay, let me see if I can share my screen here. After I do this, da -da 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 -da. screen share. Okay, can everybody see my screen? It's just a sublime text. Yep, I can. Okay, so it's so what I did was just set up the initial structure of the app, and when we talked during our last meeting, we wanted to set it up basically as simple as possible, at least in the beginning, and then you know, we could potentially grow on top of it, make it bigger, or we can talk about it today and, and, and make it make it more complex if we need to, but we wanted to keep it keep it pretty simple. There's a lot of, of different opinions about how a React app should be set up, and there's a lot of different things that you can tie into React. You may see things like Webpack. Um, I mean, you, you could use Grunt and um, Babel, which we have a little bit in here, but not to the extent that maybe some other boilerplate things you may see have it. So this is just very simple just for, for our purposes now, we can add to it later. But basically in the at the root, we've got our index HTML. Uh, I've got all of the libraries that we need stored in here. So we've got the React library. We have uh, this this is from Babel. And if for anybody who doesn't know what Babel is, it's basically a JavaScript transpiler. So what it's mainly used for is if you wanted to use some oh, new God. features in JavaScript. I mean, Mark, Mark asked in the chat if you could increase your your font size. Oh yeah, now, yeah. Which I now realize, yeah, is definitely. Yeah, definitely. sorry, sorry. This is super small. Um, you'll have to. So you know how to increase it in here. I've actually never tried to do it. Oh, if you do just Command Plus, it should. Um, oh, okay. And then Command Plus and Command Command Minus. Zooming. There you go. That looks great. Thanks. Whoa, it went a little bit bigger than that. How about this? Is that good? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was, it was kind of lagging behind there. Okay, so yeah. Um, got the, like I said, we have the React library tied to our index.html. This is a Babel. As I was saying before, Babel is a JavaScript transpiler, so anybody who's not familiar with it, if you wanted to use some more, some newer functionality in JavaScript, say stuff in ES6 and ES7, what Babel does is it takes uh, that code that you write in ES6 and ES7 and translates it back into stable JavaScript in ES5 so that it displays correctly regardless of what type of browser you're using. Mm -hmm. um, so, But in React land, Babel is also helpful because it takes JSX uh, that we put inside of our React components, which I have an example of it here, and it, it takes that and translates it into the JavaScript needed to render out correctly. So without that, it you can't just put JSX into a JavaScript file and have it automatically work. Mm. So I'll explain that a little bit more when we get to it. And then we also have jQuery in here, um, mainly because I'm using this with the API wrapper, but I figure we're probably going to be using jQuery in some other fashion more than likely, so I just went ahead and added it. And then also, this is uh, a link to the, the Meetup API uh, JavaScript that we've looked at before. Um, you know, and uh, we're not using, at least right now, any NPM or Node imports, requires, anything like that. We can if we want to down the line, but I just wanted to make it as simple as possible with as little dependencies um, on external, you know, build things as we as we needed to. 
And then this is just for the example that I have coming out of the, the JavaScript file that I have. So this is just um, our main div, which is going to hold the content that I have for the example. This can all be changed later, but I just wanted to add it so we had something there. And then this is the JavaScript that we have our app inside of. So then we have two folders. We've got just your standard. We have a styles yeah. folder. Oh, Can sorry. Ask, does anyone have questions about this so far? Yes. I just want to make sure that we pause. Uh, oh, Nan's got something in the chat here. I have uh, a question too. Okay, well, uh, let, me read, let me read Nan's first. I wonder if jQuery should go first, also in order to make sure the page is loaded before the JS files. They should insert it just above the closing body tag. Um, I know, for instance, like Angular, you tend to load up top and then jQuery, but then other stuff goes down at the bottom. Um, Nam, could you could you clarify your question a little? I, I'm not sure I totally get it. Um, I just I just was under the impression that in general it's good practice to put your files at the bottom above the, the bottom uh, body tag. And as far as Angular goes, we put them when we use um, Gulp or uh, front, they go um, inside the body tag, and the CSS goes above in the head. Mm. You could you could do that. Um, you could put the script you can put the JavaScript file at the bottom below the body tag, and then because everything's just going to be rendered inside the body anyway, so you could actually load it at the bottom and then have your CSS and everything inside the head. Yeah, you know, that, that does bring up a good point. Um, I mean, I know you usually want to put the JavaScript near the, the body tag or right above the closing body tag just so the rest of the page you know, renders before uh, the JavaScript gets loaded so it doesn't slow it down. I'm not sure how that works with React, though, to be honest, because with React, we're, we're using React to render mm -hmm. the DOM. So you may almost have to have it at the top, I don't know if that if that ends up making a difference or not. Uh, I'd have to look into that. But I mean, we could certainly move those those down if. I, if, uh, I think yeah. maybe once we have more content on the page, we can experiment with this and like see what loads faster and and what um, you know if if putting them at the bottom causes uh, errors or or some such. Uh, does that does that sound reasonable? Yeah, uh, I'm just saying it. it it doesn't matter because when you're when you're rendering rendering the class, you can just use like a query so a query selector to put it inside the body. Like you're actually taking your component and putting it where you need to where it needs to be inside the body. So it doesn't matter if it's at the top of the head or at the bottom of the bottom of the body or outside of the body at the bottom because you're placing it where it needs to be. Like in my in my sample, I have it loading. After the body. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll show you later. Okay, cool. Uh, well, Tommy, I think this looks this looks really good. Now, um, you were about to move on, I think, to the styles folder. Yeah, yeah, and that I forgot to point out that we do have a link to a style sheet here as well, just for this. I just made a main.css. Yes, yeah, so we've got two other folders here, just a standard JS and a style. So in styles, we just have uh, main.css. I don't have any styles in there right now. This is just placeholder for whenever we want to add styles to it. Cool. And then in the JavaScript folder, we've got the app.js. Um, and this is just housing the example that I have right now. It's also housing the, uh, the, the key for the Meetup API, which we'll see in a little bit. And then in here, this is just... A, a, just a sample component just to make something render the page, right? So we've just got one called app, and we're rendering out to the page. It's a div, just call it con container, and then we just put an h1 and a, a paragraph tag in there. This is just an example, so people can look at it and see what it looks like. And just to clarify, for, for those who haven't seen this before, this is JSX in here, so this isn't technically HTML. This is actually what Babel will translate into JavaScript 
like there's a React has its own JavaScript functions that correspond to divs and h1s and p tags and to other components. Um, but JSX is just makes it a lot easier to write instead of having a bunch of those functions that write out. It becomes really long and hard to read. Okay. And then this is where we actually insert our component into the page. So this React.render takes the whatever component that we want. Usually this is going to be whatever your root component is. So in this case, we just have one, so it's app. But you can put other components inside of app, and that sort of builds up in a tree, and then this is sort of the root of it. And then you specify where you want this component to be inserted into mm -hmm. the DOM. So I just have it going into that main div that we have. But obviously, right, I mean, we could change this, make it however. I just wanted to put an example in there so if people were good, going to go look at it, they can see, oh, this is a very simple example of how it's set up. Could, uh, could you, you can write it in, because uh, Dan had a question last time about if we can take the HTML, that, like the uh, HTML out and write it regular JavaScript. You can do it that way, Dan, but it's just an ugly mess of nesting. Yeah, uh, it's really crazy. If, if, you, if, you, if you pull up the console log and actually look what's converted through uh, Babel, uh, it's just it's nasty. Like you don't you don't want to do it. You don't want to do it like that. Oh, I think I think what I was asking was, is it possible to save this to like a variable somewhere? But but I guess oh, yeah. not so, really. Yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah. You can. It's uh, it's actually props. This dot props, and then whatever the variable name would be, and then you would just um set your variables at the top or something like that, and then somewhere else in the scope. Yeah of this iffy. Okay, cool. Um, I have one other question, which is, um, do we anywhere have to explicitly include JSX? That's where, no, actually, well, no, 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 because it, it's built into React. Okay. So, but, but in order for that JSX to actually render out correctly, we have to have this Babel in here. There's also okay. another like uh, another library that kind of ties into React called JSX Transformer, but that's being deprecated on the next version, and that's may it's not really used outside of testing anyway. Like you you're gonna see that if you go to the, I think it's still there at least when I was going through it, it was there. But in the React tutorial that Facebook has, they actually use that, and there's a note in there that says you know don't use this for production purposes. It's more for for just playing around with it. Okay. Uh, cool. That's that's all my questions here. Anyone else want to want to jump in? Um, I guess I, I could show what I was working on. Oh uh, well, I think Tommy. I mean, does anyone have questions about about this? And then uh, Tommy, the other folder you, you just have. Um, the yeah, API. it's okay. it's APIs, and this is just the same. Um, API you know, Meetup API module. And we stored it in here. And uh, I know, Mark, I saw that you posted a question about could we have a components folder as well to house the components, and we certainly can. We would just put another folder in JS, call it components, but then we could put like, the app.js in there um, and the other components along with it. That's one way that you can do it that I've seen a lot of other React apps do it as well. I just didn't put it in there necessarily right now just to make it, make it simpler. Since we don't really have any, we don't act. We don't really have any real components to put in there anyway at this point. But we can certainly do that. I mean, if we want to, we could do it now, or we could do it later on once we have maybe some more component files. If we end up having more component files, or we could all just put it in one file. To however we we want to do it. All right. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't really think it through uh, because if we was to have separate files, we would have to. Concat it some way, and that would probably require like a gulp task or something like that, which, which we yeah, are that's decided true. not yeah. to mess with. And uh, so, my question was: inside your um, inside your function, how will we add to it? Like, say I wanted to add like the layout of the page, right? 
and then I make a, a separate function, I mean, a, se a separate components or multiple components. And do I just, like, say, above your H1, do I just add it there, and then it'll render to the that same uh, that same ID? Yeah. So here's if I if I think I'm understanding you correctly. So you're saying like, well, how would we add another component and have it show up inside of app? Yeah. Like, or do I just need to go ahead and uh, do it outside of that that uh, that function and make another one? Yeah, so so let's let me show you one thing here. So let's say we wanted to make another component. I'll just make it. We'll call it you know, var header, and then we'll make it react dot create class. Right, same way that we have this set up here, and we'll put a render. We can do it like this, right? So instead of having this h1 here, right, we could take this out and have it. in its own component. So we can say return remember and then so in here then instead of having this H1 newbie mapper, right, we can put header. Okay. And then that's that's how you would add components inside of other components. So mm -hmm. anytime you create a component, you want to it's going to be its own create class. It's going to be part of its own, like every one of these is technically like a, a class of React. So in this file we could have you know, 50 different declarations of these if we wanted to, right? And then they kind of stack on top of each other up to whatever the root component is. Okay. And then that root gets inserted into the DOM in the react.render uh, function. Okay. Did, did that answer your question? I think so. Like, say, all right, yeah. say I wanted to make a a whole a, a layout, right? Do I do I still need to work inside your self-contained function? I mean, if you wanted if you wanted to make the whole layout go through app, then technically yes. So okay. So right. So this would be the main. So this would be like our our wrapper div, for yeah. example. Right, and then we'd have a header, and maybe inside this header, you know, we could have we could have it another, uh, well, technically not, but let's say we have another thing. So we have header. Let's say you know we can have footer, and then maybe inside of footer, there's links. Like a, you can have components inside of other components. The one thing to that to uh, to keep in mind though, when you're working with components is in this return, right, where we put the, the JSX, you can only have one sort of root node inside that. So I couldn't do, you know, this, for example, and then have, you know, another div inside here. You can only have one main uh, tag like one root tag inside of each return function. So that's why in here you'll see a lot of of the uh, tutorials. They'll put everything in this return inside of some sort of div, or okay. they'll only return one one thing. All right. That makes you can sense. only have one main thing. So they, you just basically keep making components, and they stack on top of each other. Cool. And, and reading through the, the docs, did you follow the, what is it, the, what is that called? The top level API, like the starting up with the largest part of the part of the project and then breaking it down into smaller smaller separate functions. Yeah, I mean, well, there's only one in here, so like I only had the one component, but yeah, I mean, yeah. you you could do it. I've seen it done either way, so you could have like this, like I think the the uh, the Facebook tutorial has has it where you start off with the smallest, like the most specific components, and then as you go down, it gets bigger and bigger until you get to the root component. Yeah. I've seen it other ways, though, too. And I think they even mention it in the in the documentation that it's kind of, it, there's no set style on how to do it. 
at least in their minds, it's however you sort of visualize. But the way they do it is they start with the most specific components, the littlest pieces, and then grow into the bigger pieces. Oh, okay. All right. Cool. Yeah. Um, I, don't, I, hope, I hope I don't murder his name. Uh, Farish, did I pronounce it right? He had posted a link to a Udemy course yes. that's like really helped. That, that uh, Udemy course was really good. I'm like 40% through with it. Well, which one? The first one or the second one I put? Uh, the second one, I believe. There was one. Uh, first one I put was, I think, React Native, which is uh, like beta. But he was selling it for $9. So I figured I'd let everybody know that. The first one's full React, and he does the Firebase and all that in the curriculum. Yeah, okay, that's the first one. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, that I, I've actually I, I actually started that one today, and it's it's pretty solid. I've gotten through the first part, so highly recommend yeah. it. Not free, but it's good. Mm, well, you know what? The coupon might end today, but they do a deal every like week or so. So just hold out. Yeah, because I had another ten dollar coupon, but that I think expired today too. Or yeah, yesterday. the one yeah it expired yesterday, but yeah, you're right. They have ten dollar coupons all the time. So the one I the one I I've been starting I just put into I just put a link in the group chat for anybody who wants it. I know Nan was was asking for it, so that's the one I was looking at. Cool. Okay, so ten hours of lectures, and it's so Udemy costs money. This is what? How much? Nine dollars? Ninety yeah, dollars. Once, once you get a coupon, you can go to coupon Google a coupon for Udemy. Yeah. They have them all. <laughs> yeah, I think I think when I got it was yeah it was maybe nine or ten bucks or something. I don't know if it was on sale, but I I ended up getting it. This is the one I've been I've been posting basically whenever the ten dollar deal has gone up. I don't know how much he's selling it right now. But you know what? He gave me a separate coupon, so I might still have a $10 coupon because his was a separate promotion. i got to remember his name, Stephen. He's got a dog. Is it free? <laughs> okay. That was a lot of barking. Um, cool. So, I, have we have we gotten a full tour of the file uh, tree, Tommy? Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is pretty much it. Just wanted to keep it simple, right? It as as our project gets bigger, we can certainly add more folders and and adjust the structure a little bit. But just wanted to have some sort of starting spot for people who are looking at it, seeing where to put put stuff for now, and then cool. we can yeah. adjust it as we the, go. Exactly what we were talking about for last week. So. Um, why do you wanna you wanna um, confirm the pull request there? Yeah, sure. I was just looking at the GitHub page and it looks like uh, that's the only the only outstanding one we've got. I thought there were there were others, but I guess not. Um, cool. Okay, so Mark, you were also working on something this week. I was actually just working on the tutorial. Okay. That, that was listed. Hold on. Let me pull it up. I guess I can kind of like uh, go through and explain some, some of the stuff. stuff. You'll be teaching me and probably a lot of people here. Okay. I'm just gonna pull up the files. Real quick. Okay, so hold on. It'd be better if I show the whole screen. Okay, is that better? Can you see the code? Yep. Okay. Just let me know if I need to increase it. So let me okay. show you yeah. some more. 
Okay, let me show you so far what I built through the tutorial. I use Bootstrap and React to create these two components. They're actual. It's actually one compute component uh, broken down into well, what is it? It's one thing, but broken down into many. So the first, how it was explained was, you take your what you're trying to do, the biggest part, which is what is this called? What is it called? And what is this called? Right. Whatever this is called. I forgot. I think it's called a header or something like that. And you break it down. So you have the actual header. Then you have the thumbnail and the badge icon and this is the root of the folder. So inside of my root of my folder, I have some data that can be uh, automatically changed, like the title. Change that to okay. And yeah, it changes already. And so let me start out at the biggest part, or well, the smallest part, so the badge. As Tommy was explaining, you break down each uh, component into a class, and don't worry about this modular. Usually it's var, whatever the class name is, react, create class. That's how you always start. And each class must have a render to actually work, for a, to actually be converted, uh, converted and Properly displayed, so it's not displayed as long as uh, as well as with the re uh, return. And you cannot have React. You, uh, React you cannot have just a separate class, like button class for your HTML. It has to uh, be named because it's being converted uh, mm -hmm. into regular JavaScript. So you have to have class name, and that's why everything else is. Basic HTML, nothing's confusing. It's just JavaScript mixed with HTML. And this is the properties I was talking about. Like, for you, in order uh, not to have um, static data, like hard coded in, like a number 32, um, you can put it, you can set it to the properties. The uh, this.props. And that's. Okay available to all objects. So, and that's what I was showing you before. I have that in a separate, in my core file, included in this uh, array inside the, ob uh, in a, in a separate object. And this right here gets mapped. This gets mapped to generate the next one. So if you see down here, I have another, uh, another object right here. And this is the separate one over here. So, I can make another one just by copying and pasting and changing up this data, and it'll create another one. So I'm using I'm I'm using a gulp task to to separate my my code, and I'm using required, and it shows it's saying what that class needs for so in order for my uh for my code to be trimmed. Hold on, get distracted. Uh, for my code to be placed properly inside, uh, concatenated properly inside one, this is the. No, that's not it. Yeah, that was it. Hold on. All my files, can, all of my JSX files are concatenated right here. And this is what okay. is actually being displayed in regular JavaScript. Yeah, so that's what JSX eventually translates to, which is why JSX is nice to use instead of just trying to instead use of that. writing that explicitly. Right. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Cool. 
Um, this, this is my other. These are these are the actual batch thumbnail and thumb list files. This is what was converted. Okay. So you could write this. Hmm? Mm -hmm. So this sort of template that you've got here, where you can give it different data and it and it prints stuff. So you could, for instance, use this to like repeat um, photos with. Um, with captions or, or any 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 repeated element, you can use this again and again to to put on the page. Is that the purpose of this? Uh, yeah, just just so we don't hard code something. So say like if we need this updated, we can tie this together with the actual JavaScript function that will change change this property right here, you know, all together, or call another function. So, but yeah, it's just it's just modular. That's all it is. My so. How it was explained to me was you start off with the smallest part or the biggest part and then you work you break it down you to separate separate components. And in order for my files to be concat uh, concatenated together properly, like in order, like if this was all it, if this was just concatenated by itself, it would just take it in alphabetical order and some files so um some variables want to be will be called before they were actually hoisted, you know what I'm saying? So in order to do mm -hmm. that, I used a gulp task, and I required, which is basically a dependency showing this file needs to be, this file needs this other file. So my batch doesn't need anything besides the React, which is the framework. Mm -hmm. the Can you guys excuse me for just one second? Sorry, I have a phone. Call. This is rude, but yeah. the thumbnail requires React and my badge. So it's 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 uh basically saying that badge is before this, and then so on and so on. So that's as far as I got. And which was which mm -hmm. tutorial was this from? Mm -hmm. Or was this something you just made yourself? No, it was the one. I think the first one Farish was talking about. Oh, okay. it's, it's from Johnny. It's right before you get to Firebase, and they have you make a to-do list, to-do app using Firebase as a database. Oh, okay, cool. Let me let me make sure. I grabbed the right one, and it shows you how to make a gulp file. Shows you how to uh, use npm. Uh, if you notice in my index, I don't have the dependencies actually listed in there. They're in my in my uh, npm. So normally I would use Bower as a dependency, but I didn't I didn't add it in there. I was just following the course. And this one right here. Can you guys see that? Yeah, that's that's the one that I just started. Yeah, that, that's the one I was using. So I and I know that uh, JSX was is being deprecated. Um, it's not that big. It's not that hard to actually change from JSX to Babel. Well, yeah, it's the. I think it's the like the JSX transformer that's being uh, deprecated in there. So Babel just takes its its spot, I think. But you can still write the same JSX syntax that you have. It, that that's not changing. Yeah. So, um, but if you if you do decide to go through that course, like it, it explains how to build your gulp file and like hold on, let me show you show you mine. Shows you how to build a, a basic gulp file and this just requires the dependencies I've commented, which each one did. Um, Gulp is your build process. Gulp utility logs your errors into the console for you to read when your build process is going uh, getting done. This source stream is for throwing errors, um, just like the just like the console log. It just throws a different error. Browsify is what you guys were seeing when I uh, I was showing you the require in each uh, JSX file. It show it just uh, shows you which one uh, just says which one needs to be loaded in order. Watchify is for um, automatically rebuilding and refreshing 
uh, your, I don't think it refreshes the webpage, but it automatically rebuilds every time you save. And Reactify handles converting the JSX to JS. That's why I don't um, actually, I, I could actually just, if you look at my index, hold on, right now I'm getting the call. Hold on. If you look inside my index, I actually don't even have JSX, list, JSX listed because Reactify takes care of that. And then Gulp Task is my main task that's uh, built uh, when I uh, that runs when I type in Gulp inside my console. And this is just properties that I really don't know anything about. It just said to do it, and we'll go into it later on. Uh, this is the actual thing that's happening. So it's being bundled. This is an actual event. And it's a log. It's a log error event, and then pipe is basically your next task and or where um, where something is going. So that's about it, though. Cool. But, um, oh. Sorry, sorry, I missed some of it. Tommy, what, what were you gonna say? I oh, know. I was just gonna say, yeah, I'm I'm interested to get into deeper in that tutorial because like gulp and uh, some of those build processes are completely new to me. So I'm interested to see how those kind of speed up a lot of the process. I was looking at something else for Webpack, which is another uh, sort of build helper like Gulp. And um, it's, it looks pretty cool, but it's it's a whole bunch of new stuff just kind of thrown at you real fast. So I need to, to look at it a little bit more. But Cool. Um, all right, so we've shown off some code. Hey. Corey's back from vacation. Look at that. Or Corey's cats are back anyway. Maybe, maybe Corey's not back. Um, so, all right. Build process, make your life a lot easier. Teams integration. Okay, is that I've read about it. I don't know too much about it. Um, cool. All right. So we've got. Well, the thing that I was that was supposed to happen at seven just happened, which is why I had to go run out for a second to help my neighbor with something. Um, but uh, so we can, we can go a little later than I expected. Um, the uh, In terms of like what to do next, I feel like I will finally have some bandwidth to actually like do a react, do some react uh, this next week. Um, it's been angular, angular, angular for like weeks now. Um, but fortunately I can wrap that up. So, um, Mark, I know you're still working through tutorials. Um, what's what are other people um, working on right now? Like uh, Jeremy, uh, you popped in and I, I said welcome in the chat room, but uh, we never really like chatted. So welcome. Um, and uh, are are other people? Where are other people learning React? And like, do we want to, for instance, like start working on the um, one of the next stories in Trello, which I was supposed to break up, but um, something like um, just creating a, a site to f to find to search for uh, meetups by zip code, maybe um, that could where did you all go? That could uh, we could actually like have some functionality on the app after that. Like that is something I would be interested in trying after learning a little React. Um, are there other other People who feel ready to like take on another task for the project. With a little bit more, I I got swamped by work stuff too, so I'm still kind of getting back into the. I got the the basic React stuff down. I'm trying to get deeper into working with like the props and state and all that. So I mean, I'd I'd be willing to take on something else as well while I'm work you know working with that just so I can stay fresh and stuff. Okay. So. Um, cool. That's good to hear. Anyone else? I mean, I know I know we're all learning, and that's 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 okay. Uh, we'll we'll build up a head of steam on this thing eventually. Um, but um, it's just not, it's nice hearing that you're all working and like talking about about what you're putting together and stuff. Uh, <laughs> page layout and put the map on the screen. Okay, that's that sounds like. Um, a really good thing to take on. Do you want to uh, put that on the Trello?
Sure. Cool. All right. Do that. Mark will work on a map. Um, Tommy, did we close out your pull request for the file tree? Yes, it's merged in there now. Awesome. Okay, so we've got your merger and we've got your meetup API. And um, I'm, I'm going to try to learn some React and I'm going to try to make a little meetup search widget for our thing. That'll be my goal. I don't know how far I'll get, but that's going to be my goal. So uh, anyone else want to want to take something on for this week? It's OK if we don't. But uh, I want to make sure that I give everyone an opportunity. Yeah, I'd love to at some point, but work's just too crazy this week. Sure, sure thing. Your Nan's going to study with the Udemy. OK, sounds good. Um, does any, OK, so, so does anyone else have other projects that they want to talk about and show off a little bit? Um, some folks had interesting things to share in previous weeks. Corey has to train someone to work how to build A-B tests. That sounds, and well, kind of fun. Mark is, Mark is going to dinner. Bye, Mark. Oh, OK. <laughs> he, uh, uh, family, right? It's like they want to spend time with you. <laughs> um, OK. Cool. So is there anything else anyone wants to talk about? Like, usually when I say that, someone always comes up with something. Well, I, I don't really have anything to show, but uh, last night they actually had the first um, inaugural Indianapolis React Indie meetup, which was, oh, cool. which was interesting. Um, so it was supposed to be sort of an intro to React and uh, a... Uh, specific React project that they're working on. So it's going to build, we're building onto this app, and then, you know, after a few meetups or until we get bored with it, we'll switch to something else. But uh, it's, it's a React version of Othello, the game Othello. I've never, I hardly know anything about it, but I just know that it's a game, and it has pieces, and you move pieces, and stuff happens. But, yeah. uh... <laughs> But, uh, it describes a lot of game, but yes, that yeah, is also how that's, it that's basically what I got out of it. <laughs> but um, they have, uh, and I can I can post this in the Slack. But the sort of the initial code that the 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 leader made that he went through is up on GitHub, and then each week he's going to add something more to it. Like for example, eventually it's going to be like networked multiplayer is going to be in it and, and whatnot. Um, but it was interesting, just the the I was probably the most novice of all the React people there. It sounded there were a bunch of people there that had been working with React forever, and they had uh, well, forever as in like a few months, but that's basically forever in React. World. Yeah. And uh, he had a lot of uh, scathing things to say about Angular, so close your ears. <laughs> but uh, but I'm interested to see to see how it goes the the the, uh, the rest of the the meetups, and uh, I'll post the link to the GitHub, and then every time there's a new one, I can I can post it just so people can follow along. It's not, he purposely made it not perfect, so we could talk about certain things, so I don't know if it's been updated or not, but it's it has a lot of hardcore React code. It's also in ES6, so if you don't, like me, I don't, I haven't looked into it that deep, so I can sort of read it, but there's a lot of stuff going on, so just warning you, but uh, just something cool because I haven't seen very many React meetups lately, so that's why I wanted to go check it out. Very cool. Um, yeah, I I went to a couple meetups out here for Ruby and Rails, and I was actually really disappointed. Like the people were not very friendly. Um, so yeah. there's there's a, there's a JavaScript meetup on Wednesday evenings at one of my favorite bars. So now that uh, my work schedule is going to be going to well, my my internship is ending, right? So I'm like full time job hunting. Um, I think it'd be cool to like go hang out at a bar on Wednesday evening and do JavaScript. So that um, that's probably what I'll be doing next Wednesday. Yeah, it's it's interesting. I don't know if anybody else has has felt the same way, but the re some of the React or the not React, but the meetups I've been to, and React to some extent as well. This this last one I went to is very much like you have the leader, and they know a lot about the topic, and then there's maybe two people that know a lot about the topic that kind of go back and forth, and then everybody else doesn't really chime in, either because they either already know it or the people have no idea and they don't want to jump in and 
sound like they're stupid. <laughs> At least that's mm -hmm. the that's kind of the vibe I was getting, and that's sort of why I didn't jump in a whole lot during that. I actually asked, "How did you guys learn React?" Uh, you know, wanted to bring some some links back. They didn't really have very many. A lot of people said, "Oh well, you know, the other lead developer had already known it, so they sort of passed along to me." Um, but they also mm -hmm. there there was one link and people have probably already seen it or versions of this but um, it's one of those awesome dash you know insert programming language here github repos where it has just every possible link you could think of related to that topic so this one's for react okay so it's got a whole bunch of we, stuff I link to this read me and totally overwhelm uh, someone brand new to the project uh, yeah but that that was the, the main one that they gave me so I was like, oh okay but that, it had a whole bunch of stuff in it. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of, eventually, once I get a little bit more established, I wouldn't mind starting like a Code Newbie meetup in, in, in Indianapolis to sort of fight off the mean, quote unquote mean, like, uh, you know, staunch developers that argue about stuff that ends up going way over uh, people like me who are relatively new heads. At least that's yeah. the way most of the meetups have been. Yeah. Slowly but surely, the Code Newbie Empire is expanding into meetups. So I think there's a, there are two now. Um, actually, wasn't Kim here last week who said she was co-founder of the Atlanta? Yeah. One? Yeah, I was actually going to yeah. ask her at some point about you know what they've been talking about and how that's been working because if I ever get time outside of my job, I wouldn't mind wanting to, to start one like that up just to meet some more people and, and help more people out who are not, who maybe aren't as, um, you know, who go to meetups like like me or some other newer people and it goes over their head or are afraid to, to jump in and talk about things that other people may have a lot more experience on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I had the same experience. Meetups were, didn't, didn't immediately go my way, but I, I still have hope. Uh, and I do like I like that the the um, Code Newbie chapters are sort of opening in places that are not necessarily like tech hubs. So I feel like Indianapolis would be another one of those cities where it's like you do kind of have to struggle to find people. Um, yeah, yeah, a little bit. It's growing, yeah. but it's not. It's definitely not the Bay Area. That's for sure. Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Easy out here. Um, so oh, Corey's been Corey's been in in the chat room. Talk, sympathizing with you, I think, about how conferences are intimidating like that as well. Um, yeah. Oh, cost of living. I have a I have a um, a friend who lives in London who's hiring Angular devs, and it's so like so far out. It'll it'll never happen. But I was like, wait, I complain all the time about the cost of living in the Bay Area. Why would I move to London, which is even worse? <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, anyway, that's what's going on in my life. Um, cool. Uh, anyone else? Now, with, do they have sinkholes in London? I didn't know that. They have like they have like terrorism in London, like on a regular basis. They have uh, what like lots of construction. I've heard. I guess the Olympics already ended. Um, St. Albans sinkhole evacuation. Wow. That is crazy. <laughs> Sinkholes are one of those things where it's like you don't think about them at all, and then, but then they just appear out of nowhere, you know? You don't think uh, about them until you fall into one. Until you fall into one. I mean, I, I guess if you live in Florida, you can, like, get your property tested for them or something, but it's just, like, one of those random things. Uh... Cool. Anyone else have anything that they wanna wanna chat about? All right. Home insurance covers sinkholes. That's good. It's probably very expensive as well because lots of terrible things happen to Florida. Huh. All right. <laughs> well, <laughs> if we're just going to talk about sinkholes, I think that means I think that means we can finish up for the day. Um, so yeah, um, anyone who wants to get in touch during the week, try to DM me. Oh, one more thing, Tommy. Thank you for the blog post. I forwarded it to Saran. Um, if anyone else wants to write a blog post about the work that they do, just even if you're just like learning a tutorial about React, 
um, or actually creating something for our project, um, I'd love for, to, to have you write something and put it up on the JavaScript enabled site. So, um, Tommy, I'll let you know when that post is going to be up. All right, awesome. Sounds good. Cool. All right. Good night, everyone. All right, later. Bye.